dear students uh, bismillah rahman rahim assalamu alaikum uh, aaj hum padh rahe hain radiation diffraction instruments unme se jo pehle humne padha hai usme you know ke ionization chamber padha hai iske alawa humne proportional counter padha hai aur aaj hum jo padhne ja rahe hain that is uh, About the Giger Muller counter. उसमें यह है कि इस हर से पहले it is also a form of gas field detector. और uh, gas field detector you know के uh, have different regions. Uh, first region and uh, is the ionization chamber. Other is the proportional counter. और तीसरा जो region इस तरह है वो है Giger Muller counter. तो so, uh, you know के our gas field detector consists of a, a volume of a gas between two electrodes. With an electrical potential difference applied between the electrodes, ionizing radiation produces ion pairs in the gas. Second, positive ions attracted to the negative electrode, and electrons are ion ions attracted to the positive electrodes. In most detectors, cathode is the wall of the container that holds the gas, and anode is the wire inside the container. The electrons make a meter needle deflect, and uh, if a loudspeaker is uh, connected, you can hear a loud click every time particles are detected. So when a particle are detected by a system, so that is uh, known as one pulse. Or uh, after each uh, detection, there is a time interval between two pulses that is called dead time. And uh, you have studied like that. Okay. How it works? Uh, you know, this is we also have studied in uh, previous lectures. <clears throat> okay. When a gas uh, uh, is uh, receive any radiation from external source inside the uh, gas field detector, uh, this gas actually ionizes according to the energy of the uh, incident particles. If the energy of the incident particle is greater, the greater uh, ionization would be there. If uh, the ionization uh, energy of the uh, particles uh, or uh, incident radiations are uh, less, then the small ionization would be there. However, another important factor is that the uh, potential uh, applied between these two electrodes, uh, anode and cathode. if the potential is very low then it is probably the formation of negative ion and positive ion attracted by these two electrodes if the potential is less definitely these ions sufficiently not reach to the respective electrodes and recombine this is called recombination region and however if this voltage is applied more and more over these two electrodes so no more electrode uh, these ions will recombine with each other and due to this reason this is called ionization region okay and similarly by applying the potential more and more uh, what is what will be happen the more and more electron uh, the ions will produce and uh, more current will also be produced as we have studied in previous okay if we see this region this is a beta uh, less energetic particle alpha higher energetic particle due to this reason and these have less ionization power these have higher ionization power and definitely uh, you know uh, these uh, particles when ionizes the gas inside the system and and that will produce more current as compared to the beta particle produced uh, ionization so this is a current so high current will be produced by the alpha particle because a greater number of and uh, uh, you know the ionization ions will be produced 
uh, this is also a recombination uh, region because voltage is very small in this region and uh, ions may also recombine and to form uh, neutral molecules. In this region, voltage is uh, greater around about, it is uh, 200 to 150 to 300 uh, voltage. In this region, uh, the voltage is sufficiently high and uh, no more uh, ions will recombine with each other. However, the current remains same because the number of ionization will not increase. These are the primary ionization, which is due to the uh, incidence of alpha particles or beta particles and, and, and any other radiation. So due to this reason, current remains same. But in this region, uh, this region is called ionization region. Ionization region means uh, the ionizes uh, a gas molecule which actually ionizes into uh, you know negative ions and positive ions definitely uh, they uh, form a pulse of current and that current is uh, is called ionization region and this current producing this region in ionization region is a not uh, a constant value with constant value so go ahead another by increasing more uh, potential about uh, 300 to 400, 800. Uh, this voltage region is uh, in this region uh, similar. The, the, these are uh, ions which actually produce due to the um, uh, incident of the alpha particle, beta particle, and gamma part uh, radiations. Uh, they accelerate very quickly due to the high voltage and they also strike other uh, molecules and produce secondary ionization. So first primary ionization was uh, appeared was uh, developed due to the incidence of the alpha particle, beta particle, and the gamma particle. But uh, the secondary ionization is due to the collision of the ions or electrons or uh, positive ions with other molecules. So a uh, number of ions are also produced in a larger quantity in this region, and the current is also increased in this uh, region due to secondary secondary production of the ions. So this region is called proportional region. Proportional region is uh, due to the fact that uh, if the primary ionization is greater uh, in this region, the current will also be greater. If the primary ionization that is actually appeared in the uh, uh, ionization region, if it is uh, less, then the current produced in this region will also be less. So proportional to the voltage in this region. Okay, uh, primary ions, not voltage. Okay. Next region is a limited proportionality region that is not a, a, a you know, to say that a, a fruitful region and not a good region. We will not deal with it in uh, this uh, gas field detector. However, uh, at 1000 uh, voltage, when we increase the voltage up to 1000, there is a plitude appear. Uh, there is no more, longer a difference between uh, either the ionization due to alpha particle or beta particle. However, the current produced by alpha particle or beta particle not depending on the primary ionization. So all the current, uh, the value of uh, both par uh, uh, due to the both particles uh, is the same. So if we see here in proportionality region, uh, the current produced by alpha particle is greater and beta particle is less. However, in uh, this region that is a palitio appeared that is no more uh, difference between either the ionization is due to alpha particle or beta particle. There is the same current. So this region is called Gigermolar region, and uh, this is also the very important information and uh, pulse uh, regarding the uh, detection of uh, uh, counts. It will give the counts, not uh, what actually the uh, origin of uh, this, that counts, either alpha, beta, Gamma, but just it gives you the counts of uh, how many counts actually uh, appeared from the source. So other region is a uh, uh, continuous uh, discharge region that uh, actually not depending on the alpha and beta particle, but also uh, the voltage is so high. So under the influence of uh, such high voltage, uh, the molecule undergo ionization. There is no need for ionization to alpha particle or beta particle. So no more longer it is also uh, very important for okay. so this region is called a giger molar counter as we have studied uh, as the detector operating voltage continues to increase the limpid solution region passed through and 
enter into the chicken model compound yes in this region all pulses height are equal and if efficiency is re uh, relatively high however however photon efficiency will uh, vary based on uh, energy finally the continuous uh, discharge region is uh, uh, entered where the voltage is so high that uh, arcing occurs okay mean there is a, a no need of uh, you can see that uh, the incident radiation and these are the voltage that actually play a role in order to uh, ionize the gas molecule inside the gas field detector so come to the point our given molar control what is meant by given molar control most uh, commonly type of detectors uh, gas amplification multiplication of electron with uh, multiplication factor of 10 raised by 8 to 10 to 10 down that time used for counter uh, dose uh, dose rate and surface activity these are the given molar control uh, types uh, shapes and structures that appear in the figure so what are the giger molar counter giger molar counter is an instrument used for measuring ionizing radiation used widely in such applications as radiation dosimeter radiological protection experimental physics and the nuclear industry it detects ionizing radiation such as alpha particle beta particle and gamma particles using the ionization effect produced in a giger molar tube which gives its name to instrument in wide and uh, prominent use as a handheld radiation survey instrument it is uh, perhaps one of the world's best known radiation detection instrument are also known as a uh, survey meter uh, for the uh, surveying different type of uh, radiation or regions in laboratories or any other place the original detection principle was discovered in 1908 but it was not until the development of uh, the giger molar tube in 1928 that the, the giger molar counter became practical since then it has uh, been very popular due to its uh, uh, robust sensing element and uh, relatively low cost however there are limitation in measuring high radiation rates and energy of incident radiation so these are the some uh, limitations regarding the giger molar counter however uh, Uh, keeping behind these uh, uh, limitations but the importance is that uh, it is uh, highly important in order to survey the radiation in the bodies and different other uh, nuclear industries as well as in very cheaper uh, way because this uh, instrument is very cheaper easily handled so what are the basic component uh, basic component as you have studied this is a gas field detector so basic component are the similar that we have studied in previously but however a giger molar counter consists of a giger molar tube the sensing element which uh, uh, detect the radiation and the processing electronic uh, which uh, display the result the giger molar tube is filled with an inert gas such as helium neon or argon at low pressure to which a high voltage typically 400 to 600 voltage is applied okay this voltage it is so high voltage that is the primary electrodes uh, and the primary ionization ionizing particle like that negative ions and positive ions accelerator are highly kinetically energetic due to that reason they produce more and more energy however this energy is uh, Uh, these ionization not to give uh, difference in the uh, current production as it give a different type of radiation give similar ratio in the giger uh, molar region when a single gamma or a beta ray entering the tube a small amount of ionization is produced the center electrode uh, which is uh, at high positive uh, potential attracts the electron and gives them energy to produce further ionization until the whole volume contains ions ion pairs so the electron received by the uh, anode uh, these are uh, uh, these are travel through the circuit to the cathode where they get discharged or uh, to the uh, positively ions and uh, the positive ions uh, again become neutral 
so when uh, ready to receive another radiation from uh, external sources to ionize the electrons are uh, rapidly collected the voltage on the center electrode drop and the slow positive ions go to the outer wall five after 400 uh, microseconds that time the tube is ready to repeat the process Townshed discharge, uh, the townshed discharge or uh, townshed allowance is a gas ionization process where free electrons are accelerated by an electric field, collide with gas molecule, and consequently free additional electrons are produced. So this is avalanche uh, uh, process electrons, which actually uh, ionizes initially from the uh, ionizing radiation, but after that they under the influence of the electric field and as uh, potential they further uh, collide with other uh, neutron molecule and produce more ionization those electrons are in turn accelerated and free additional electron the result is an uh, avalanche multiplication that uh, permits electro electrical conduction through the gas the discharge depends on source of uh, free electrons significant electric field without both the phenomena does not occur okay readout there are two types of uh, readout uh, uh, radiation readout counts the counts display is uh, the simplest uh, as uh, the number of ionizing events displayed either as a count rate commonly counts per second are as a total over a set time period. The counts readout is normally used when alpha or beta particles are being detected. A radiation dose, it is displayed in a unit such as sievert, which is normally used for the measuring gamma or X-ray dates. Okay, dear students, uh, uh, these are about uh, the Giger molar counter. I hope this is a basic instrument that is used for the survey meter of ionizing radiation any, anywhere in the laboratory or any other uh, place, uh, which is expected to be a, a, a source of radiation there. Uh, so, in the uh, as next lecture, we will study, inshallah, about the uh, uh, dose calibrator, that is another type of uh, the gas field detector. Uh, uh, in detectors for the uh, determination of uh, ionizing uh, counts or ionizing radiations. Thanks a lot. Thanks. So, dear students, so now we will uh, study about the uh, Giger model counter using uh, some animated videos so that uh, you may be clear about the working and uh, the structure of the Giger model counter. Please have a look. Geiger Muller, or GM counters, are one of a class of gas-filled radiation detectors that operate by using the ionizing nature of alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. Neutron-sensitive devices can also be produced, typically by introducing boron, which interacts with the neutrons to produce secondary ionizing particles that trigger the count response. The GM tube is a sealed metal cylinder containing a low-pressure inert gas, such as argon or neon. A thin metal wire runs down the center of the tube, which is electrically insulated from the outer cylinder at the rear of the tube. The front of the tube is sealed with a radiation window that is specific to the typical radiation to be detected by the counter. For example, a thin mica window is used if the tube is to be sensitive to alpha particles and low energy beta particles, both of which have low penetrating power. A thicker window or a different material, such as glass or a thin sheet of metal, is used for high energy beta particles, while for gamma rays, the tube is often sealed without a window. In such tubes, the detection occurs when the high energy photons liberate electrons from the tube's outer wall. The inner wire and the outer cylinder are maintained at a potential difference of about one kilovolt, and in the absence of radiation, no current can flow through the inert gas between the central anode and the outer cathode. The connections are made via wires into a connecting housing that fits over the rear of the tube. 
an outer tube guard will typically screw onto this to protect the actual GM tube. This tube guard can be open at the end or be covered by an end cap energy filter to change the energy and particle sensitivity of the device or if a carefully calibrated design is used allow for ambient dose measurements rather than ambient count measurements to be made. The wires connect the tube to the control electronics which supply power, perform the counting operations and provide other functions such as conversion from counts to dose, data logging, data averaging and driving the display. The tube works on the principle of gas amplification. Incoming radiation ionizes some of the inert detector gas resulting in a free electron and a positively charged ion. The electric field inside the tube attracts the charged ion to the outer cathode while the electron is attracted towards the central anode. As the electron approaches the anode the electric field it encounters grows in strength so that the accelerating force increases. Near the anode the acceleration is such that the electron has enough energy to either excite the electrons in other atoms of the detector gas or to ionize them completely. Excited electrons quickly decay releasing photons that can trigger ionization farther along the tube while electrons free by ionization can go on to cause further ionization leading to an exponential growth. This is often referred to as the avalanche effect. The charge migration in the tube leads to a reduction in the potential of the anode and an increase in the potential of the cathode, either of which may be detected as a signal by the counter electronics. As the negative charge around the anode increases, the effective electric field is reduced and eventually this reduction is such that further avalanches are not possible and the tube can no longer detect radiation. This state persists until sufficient electrons have recombined at the anode and positive gas ions recombined at the cathode so that the field has recovered enough in strength to trigger another avalanche. This is the so-called dead time of the detector, the time after a detection that the counter is insensitive to further events and its existence means that the detector count rate must be corrected to give the actual count rate. After the dead time, Further detections are possible, but with reduced signal strength. The total time that elapses before the full strength signal is produced by a subsequent event is called the recovery time. The recombination of positive detection gas ions at the cathode may be problematic as the ions may be neutralized in an excited state or may dislodge electrons from the cathode. When in an excited state, the atom will eventually decay to the ground state by emitting a photon. Both these photons and dislodged electrons may be capable of causing reionization of the gas, triggering another avalanche so that a single detection event could lead to a continuous discharge. To prevent this, a quenching mechanism is used. The quenching may be electronic so that the electric field is removed for a short period of time following an event to prevent further discharge or may be inherent in the design by mixing quenching gases with the detection gas. Such quenching gases are designed to be easier to ionize than the detection gas so that during migration to the cathode the detection gas is neutralized by the quenching gas which then becomes the positive ion migrating to the cathode. When the charged quenching gas ion recombines at the cathode, it does so in the ground state so that further avalanche discharge is avoided. The most effective quenching gases are organic compounds, but these are dissociated irreversibly during the quenching, which gives the tube a limited operating lifetime. An alternative is to use a halogen gas, which is recovered in full at the cathode, so avoiding this removal of the quenching gas. The raw output from a GM tube shows a fraction of the radiation counts per second which is modified by taking account of the dead time to give the actual counts per second. If the radiation type and energy are known then the counts per second reading may be calibrated so that the unit gives an equivalent dose rate. This is not the best method for dose determination from an unknown source as in the GM tube the signal pulse height is relatively insensitive to the instant radiation energy and type so that the energy deposited is difficult to determine. The use of counts per second or dose rate will depend to a large extent on the circumstances of use. 
In both modes, radiation is being detected. In the former, the activity is displayed, while in the latter, a conversion is made to indicate the energy deposition rate. For widespread contamination of an area by a radioactive material, the energy reaching the GM tube will be small as the inverse square law of distance and transit absorption will remove all but a fraction of incident particles. However, the radiation from the contamination will be measurable as an increase in the background radiation count level, which can easily be expressed in terms of an increase in the number of counts per second. As a practical radiation detection device, a GM tube is not considered a natural choice for measuring radiation produced by a pulse device, such as a LINAC. The reason is that if the dead time is longer than the pulse width duration, the detector will only pick up a single event rather than a full bunch worth of electrons or photons, and the tube will count the pulses, not the radiation, leading to an underestimation of the dose. If the dead time is significantly longer than the bunch frequency, the detector will count only a fraction of the bunches, leading to a further under-reading. If the operating characteristics of the GM tube and the LINAC are known, these effects may be compensated for so that a GM tube could be used. This will mean, however, that a different detection method has been used to initially calibrate the data. So we are very thankful dear students for the uh, ion active uh, website for uh, making such a beautiful and uh, well explained uh, Giger model counter uh, tube uh, animation. So next we move toward the type of Giger model, Giger model counter that is uh, broadly there are two main types. One is the end window type and uh, there is the gapped. So for alpha particle low energy beta particles and low energy X-rays. Uh, the usual form is a cylindrical end window tube that you have seen in the uh, animated videos. Uh, this type has a window at one end and uh, definitely uh, covered in a thin material uh, through which a low penetrating radiation can easily pass. The other end houses the electrical connections to the anode. So this is a window and other as electrical connections uh, to the anode and the cathode. So this is a mica window that is very thin and allow uh, to pass through it uh, the uh, low penetrating uh, radiation like that uh, alpha particles and uh, beta particles. And the other kind of uh, is uh, Pancake tube type that is uh, the pancake tube is a, a variant of the Andrew window tube, but which is uh, uh, designed for use of beta and gamma contaminated monitoring, contamination monitoring. It is it has uh, roughly the same sensitivity to particle uh, as the end window type, but has a flat and nullar shape, so the large window area can be utilized with a minimum of gas space. The anode is normally multi-wide and concentric circle, so it extends fully throughout the gas space. So next type is a windowless type. That is, this general type is distinct from the dedicated end window type, but has two main subtypes which use different radiation interaction mechanisms to obtain a count. One is a thick wall used for highly energy gamma and detections. Uh, this type generally has an overall overall well wall thickness of about one to two millimeter of chrome steel uh, because most highly high energy gamma protons uh, photons will pass through the low density fill uh, gas without interacting and ionizing the gas. Uh, the tube use the interaction of the photon on the molecule of the wall material to produce high energy second electron within the wall. So these electrons actually then uh, trigger the ionization inside the uh, tube uh, using uh, the gas molecules. Other is thin wall. Thin wall tube are used for uh, high energy beta detection where the beta energy via beta and uh, enters via the side of the tube and uh, interact directly with the gas, low energy gamma and X-rays detection. The low energy photons interact better with the 
feel gas. So this design concentrates on increasing the volume of the fill gas by using a long thin valve tube and does not use the interaction of proton in the tube valve. Okay, the next is the application of a Gigamolar counter. Uh, it is very useful as uh, in lectures so we also uh, studied, also discussed side by side. However, uh, the main and uh, application of a Geiger molar counter is the particle detection for alpha particle and low energy beta particle. The end window type of Geiger molar, Geiger molar tube has to be used as these particles have a limited range even in free air and are easily stopped by a solid material. Therefore, the tube requires a window which is thin enough to allow as many as possible of these particles uh, through to the gas, fill gas. So for this purpose, a mica thin window is used uh, which allow uh, such type of particle to pass through it for the ionizing purposes inside the tube. High energy beta particles can also be detected by a thin walled windowless dagger molar tube which has no end of window, although the tube wall have a greater stopping power than a thin end window. They still uh, allow this more uh, energetic particle to reach the fill gas. Okay. End window Geiger molar detectors are still used as a general purpose portable uh, radioactive uh, contamination measurements and uh, detection instruments on to their uh, relatively low cost uh, robustness and their relatively high detection efficiency particularly with the high energy beta particles. If we see about uh, other application that is a gamma and X-ray detection that is very common uh, for the uh, Geiger molar use. Uh, so Geiger molar counter are widely used to detect common radiation and uh, gamma radiation and for this the windowless tube is used. For high energy gamma it is uh, largely uh, relies on interaction of the photon radiation with the tube or Material. Usually, one to two millimeter of chrome steel on a thick wall tube to produce electrons within the wall, which uh, can enter the enter and ionize the fill gas. This is necessary as uh, the low pressure gas in the tube has little interaction with the high energy gamma radiation. So, direct and uh, uh, interaction with the fill gas is not possible with the high energy gamma radiation, and no more uh, ionization also uh, appear. So, it is a secondary way. Uh, interact way to which uh, the gamma radiation interact with the uh, steel chrome and produce electron. These electron then uh, uh, appear as to produce uh, ionization in the film gas. So other application is the neutron detection. A variant a variation of uh, the given tube is used to measure neutron, uh, where the gas used is uh, baron trifluoride or helium three and uh, plastic moderator is used to slow the neutrons. This creates an alpha particle inside the detector and thus neutrons can be counted. Gamma measurement, uh, personal uh, protection and process control and other. Uh, the term uh, Geiger counter is commonly used to mean a handheld survey type meter. However, the Geiger principle is uh, in wide use in uh, stall area gamma alarms for personal protection and in process measurement and interlock application. A Geiger tube is still the sensitive device, but the processing electronics will have a high degree of sophistication and reliability than that used in handheld survey meters. So if we see about the limitation of a Geiger molar counter, there are two main limitations of Geiger counter because the output pulse from a Geiger tube is always the same in magnitude uh, regardless of the energy of the incident radiation or type of radiation, the tube cannot differentiate between the radiation type. So as you see in the uh, gas field detector graph where there are different uh, regions uh, we uh, developed, the, in the Geiger counter region, there is a same quality for alpha particle as well as giga particle and, and gamma particle and uh, gamma radiation and beta particle. So it means there is no differentiation between all these three type of uh, radiations or particles and uh, the same, uh, just we can uh, calculate the counts uh, of the radiation. A further limitation is the inability to measure high radiation rates due to the data of the time. So 
inability to measure high radiation rates due to the dead time of the tube. As you know, you studied, uh, you just see in the animation tube uh, when there is a burst of radiation enter in the uh, Geiger tube. So there is a, a very rapid, uh, uh, the pulse appearance is uh, more rapidly as compared to the uh, dead time. So it is uh, show inability to completely uh, analyze and uh, detect the such high burden of radiation. This is an insensitive period after each ionization of the gas during which any further incident radiation will not result in a count and the incident rate is therefore lower than actual. Definitely there is a, so many radiations are also ionized and so many gas molecule ionizes and in a heavy burden of radiation but uh, in a dead period that ionizing the radiation not detected so what actually we detected and counts in a meter that is uh, less as uh, actually happening inside the field. So this is a big uh, uh, limitation for uh, high burden radiation. So for a less uh, uh, radiation, uh, it is uh, good for uh, use, but not for the high burden radiation. Typically, the dead time will reduce indicated count rate about uh, about about one zero one hundred and four to one. Than five pounds per second, depending on the definition of the field in this case. So, dear students, what actually we concluded after all that, uh, Giger Muller counter are regarded as the one of the world's best radiation detection instrument and is used widely and permanently as a handheld radiation surveillance instrument. This device is very popular due to its uh, robust sensing element and relatively low cost. Like that, Molar counter are used in a numerous fields and it is uh, even regarded as an indispensable tool for the detection and measurement of ionizing radiation. However, there are limitations in measuring uh, high radiation rates and uh, the energy of uh, incident radiation. There are, I think, no issue at all uh, in the presence of such type of uh, good applications. So, dear students, uh, this is uh, uh, the like the model control that we studied, inshallah, in next lecture we will study about the calibrated. Allah.